Before the beginning, there was nothing. No earth, no heavens, no sky. Only the world of ice. This was named Niflheim. And the world of fire. This was named Muspel. And the space in between them, called the Yawning Gap. To the north of the Yawning Gap was Niflheim, the Dark World. In this mist-covered world is eleven poisonous rivers each springing from the same well at the epicenter of Niflheim. A great storm hovered above the ice world called Fergumir. Niflheim was colder than you could imagine, and then even colder than that. The murky mist that cloaked everything hung heavily. The skies of this world were hidden by mist, and the ground was cloaked with a frigid air. To the south was Muspel, the world of fire and light. Everything there glowed and burned. Muspel was light, where Niflheim was dark. Where the world of Niflheim was frozen, Muspel was molten and covered in lava. The land was aflame with the roaring heat of a blacksmith's fire. There was no solid earth, nothing but sparks and spurting heat, molten rocks and eternal embers. In Muspel, at the edge of the flame, where the sparks leap from their home, and where the lava flow ends, stands Surtur, who existed before the gods. He stands there now. He holds a flaming sword, and the two worlds of Niflheim and Muspel are as one to him. During Ragnarok, and only then, will Surtur leave his station. He will go forth from Muspel with his flaming sword and burn the world with fire, and one by one, the gods will fall before him. Between Muspel and Niflheim was a void, an empty place of nothingness without form. The rivers of Niflheim flowed into the void. After some time passed beyond comprehension, these poisoned rivers slowly became massive glaciers, and these glaciers crept and slowly made their way towards the fire world. Where the ice and fire met, the ice began to melt, and in the melting waters, life appeared. The likeness of a person bigger than worlds, the largest giant that has existed and ever will exist. This being was neither male or female, but both at the same time. This creature was the ancestor of all giants, and it called itself Ymir. But Ymir was not the only living thing to be formed by the melting of the ice. There was also a cow, greater than your imagination can conceive. The cow licked the salty blocks of ice for nourishment and great rivers of milk came from her four udders, and this milk in turn nourished Ymir. The giant drank the milk and grew. Ymir named the cow Arumla. One day, as the cow licked the ice, people appeared. The first day, only a man's hair. The second, his head. And the third day, the shape of a whole man was revealed. This was Buri, the first of the gods. Ymir went into a deep sleep, and while it slept, it gave birth. A male and a female giant were born from beneath Ymir's left arm, a six-headed giant born from its legs. From these children, all giants are descended, with Ymir being their progenitor. Buri took a wife from among these giants, and they had a son, whom they named Bor. Bor married Bestla, who was the daughter of a giant, and together they had three sons. Odin, Vili, and V. Odin, Vili, and V. The three sons of Bor grew into men. They saw as they grew far off the flames of the fire world and the darkness of the ice world, but they knew that each of those worlds could never be a home for them. The brothers were trapped forever in the yawning gap, the vast void between the fire and the ice. There was no sea or sand, no grass or rocks, no soil or trees. There was no heaven and no earth. The gap was nowhere and nothing, only an empty void with an unlimited potential for life and new existence. The time for creation had come and the three brothers plotted. They spoke of the universe and of life and of what could be. Odin, Vili, and V killed Ymir. It was a necessary thing, not good or evil. There was no other way to make the worlds. This was the beginning of all things, and through one death, 
All life was made possible. They stabbed the great giant. An ocean of blood burst from Amir's corpse and killed all of the giants except for two. Berlgamir and his wife survived by clambering onto a wooden box which carried them like a boat. All the giants that exist today are descended from them. Odin and his brothers made the soil from Amir's flesh. Amir's bones were piled up and became the mountains and cliffs. All of our rocks, pebbles, sand, and gravel are made from the teeth and bones of Amir that were broken and crushed by the three brothers in their battle with the giant. The seas that encompass the world are Amir's blood and sweat. If you look up at the sky, you're looking at the inside of Amir's skull. The stars you see at night and the planets and comets and the shooting stars these are the sparks that flew from the fires of Muspel, taken from that fiery world in order to give this one light. And the clouds in the sky? These are Emir's brains, whose thoughts remain a mystery even to this day. The maggots that began to feast on the rotting remains of Emir would become the dwarves who created great cities below the earth. Odin reached into the ground and pulled out four dwarves and threw each of them in a key direction so that they could hold up the sky for eternity because he feared that the skull of Amir would fall due to its rotting corpse. These dwarves were Nordi, Sudri, Austri, and Vestri who became north, south, east, and west. The world is a flat disk and the sea encircles the perimeter. The giants live at the edges of the world beside the deepest, darkest oceans. To keep the giants at bay and their creation safe, the three brothers made a wall from Amir's eyelashes and set it around the middle of the world, and they called the place within the wall Midgard. Midgard was empty. The land was beautiful, but no one was there to appreciate it or stare up at the clouds. The three brothers knew that a world is not a world until it is inhabited. They wandered high and low, looking for people, but there were no people to be found. At last, they stumbled across two logs that had been washed ashore by the crashing waves. The first log was of ash wood. The second log was of elm wood. The gods took the two logs and set them upright in the sand. The logs were the height of people. Odin held them, and one by one, he breathed life into them. They were no longer dead pieces of wood on a beach. Vili gave them will. He gave them intelligence and drive. Now they could move and have desires. V carved them. He gave them the shape of man. He carved their ears, eyes, and lips. The two logs stood on the beach, two naked people. One had been carved with male genitals and the other female. The three brothers made clothes for the woman and man to cover themselves and to keep them warm from the sea spray. And finally, they gave the two people names. The man was called Ask, and the woman they called Embla. Ask and Embla were the father and the mother of all mankind. Every human being owes its life to its parents, and once you trace the lineage back far enough, you will find that we are all linked to Ask and Embla. Embla and Ask stayed in Midgard, safe behind the wall the gods had made from Amir's eyelashes. In Midgard, they would make their homes protected from the giants and monsters and any conceivable danger that made its home in the unknown. But in Midgard, they could raise their children in peace. That is why Odin is called the Allfather, because he was the father of the gods and because he breathed the breath of life into our father and mother. God or mortal, Odin is the father of us all. But be weary, just as the world came from nothingness and chaos, once the day of Ragnarok comes, it will return to nothingness and chaos. Well, that concludes the story of creation in Norse mythology. There is a lot of strong imagery in this story and really good symbolism. I'm happy I could share it with you. I hope you've enjoyed this mythology segment of the podcast. It's a bit different from the other segments I've done, but I wanted to keep in line with the Viking episode I just released. And what better way to do that than to tell you their story of how everything came into existence. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. Please like and share it with all your friends, family, or anyone you think would be interested. 
I hope you learned something new and tune into the next one.